A young man who says he was injured in an exchange of gunfire approaches a United Nations delegation as it tours Bani Walid's main hospital. This randomly incurred injury is another example of the consequences visited upon ordinary Libyans by ongoing insecurity. In an effort to address this, Special Representative of the UN Secretary General Ian Martin and his team are in town to urge tribal elders to negotiate with the new government about the restoration of state authority in their town. Bani Walid is home to the Warfalla, one of Libya's largest tribes. Last year it witnessed some of the most intense fighting between revolutionaries and loyalists to the former regime, which ended with the city's capitulation to revolutionary forces. One year, and one major confrontation later, discontent is brewing once again. Bani Walid remains the only town in Libya where government forces and police do not enter the city, and some residents are afraid to leave it. Bani Walid needs to normalize its security situations with the, with the state, and they still have uh, some security issues that they need to be addressed. This is part of the package that needs to be solved between Bani Walid and the uh, new authorities in Libya. But uh, definitely you know, the issue of detainees, the issues of uh, hostages from both sides, uh, the presence of the uh, uh, government security forces in, in, in town is among the issues that we uh, discuss with the, uh, the population here. Libya needs the Wafala and Bani Walid, and Bani Walid needs a proper government. But the further appeal I, I, I make to you is to recognize that this can be a new moment because of the election of the General National Congress and the coming into being of a new government. Many Walid's elders complain that due to a widespread perception of loyalty to the former regime, they are subjected to arbitrary detentions and kidnappings by armed groups, even while holding some prisoners themselves. Walid was put on a siege for two weeks in the last two months, where food, gas, and medicine stopped for two weeks. In addition to that, some falls to war <coughs> from other parts of the country. When they entered Bani Walid, some loaded, stole cars, and final behavior in almost each house. Some radical Islamists were also using armed groups as a front to promote their own ideology. This gives the feeling and frustration that 2011 revolution does not belong to these people. The UN believes that the way out of the current impasse lies in establishing an effective and fair justice system that can process some of the estimated 7,000 prisoners being held in detention centers around the country and act as an alternative to the private settling of feuds. Let me just make one final appeal and recommendation to you. I will not ask any Libyan to forget an injustice that they have suffered. Libya needs a process in which all those injustices can be, can be heard, in which victims can be compensated, in which the fate of the missing can be determined, in which people who are wrongly detained can be released, but in which the worst of the perpetrators of human rights violations are brought to justice within the law. Tensions rose again in September as the families of detainees inside Bani Walid demonstrated outside the National Congress. A visit by a National Congress delegation resulted in the release of at least two prisoners being held from the neighboring city of Misrata and eased tensions. But as the UN points out in its latest transitional justice report, Libya is at a critical juncture in its history. If it is to move forward, it should carefully consider its past in settling the foundations for a new democratic society. Beni Walid could benefit from such a spirit.